Well, that's no fun. Good morning. So I'm currently sitting in a blanket cocoon in the back of my van with this little tube stuck up under here, blowing in cold air, keeping me nice and cool. Because if I grab my thermometer from outside of my little cocoon of cold air, it is 110 degrees Fahrenheit in the back of my van. For those of you guys who are not in America, that is 44 degrees Celsius. So it is quite unbearably hot outside of this cocoon. And typically when I'm in hot places like this, it wasn't too hot last night. It got down to just about 75 degrees in the middle of the night. So I was able to turn my AC off right around 1 a.m. when I fell asleep. But this morning when I woke up around 8 a.m., it was hot again. So I had to turn the AC on again, stick it under the blanket, and I was able to fall back asleep for another hour and a half, even in 100 degree heat. And this little AC unit gets so much crap online because if I just left this tube out here in the van, it would do almost absolutely nothing. It wouldn't cool off any section of this van. Maybe if I had a wall right here, it would cool off just this bed area. But I think it's just because people don't use it right. If you point this tube directly at you, it's perfect for one person, because if you point this tube directly at you, it keeps you cool. Or if you tuck it under a blanket while you're sleeping, it keeps you cool. It doesn't use a ton of power. So this thing has been an absolute lifesaver. So I can do nothing but recommend this. It's super small, super portable, super easy to set up and it keeps me nice and cool even in 112 degree summer heat down here in California. I feel like for the last month and a half, we have been pretty blessed with the uh, temperatures because we've been up in Alaska, it's been like 60 degrees, 50 degrees at night, beautiful for sleeping, and now we're down here with everybody else boiling in the summer heat. I apologize if it's loud, I got all the fans on, but it is time to hit the road. After we go inside, we're camped out at a gas station, get some breakfast, because I think I can only endure one more night of camping in heat like this. So today we're heading towards Southern California and towards the beach. I don't think we're gonna make it all the way there because it's about a seven hour drive, so we're gonna drive five hours today, suffer in the heat for one more night, and then make it down to the coast. But last night, we camped out at this Love's parking lot, kind of over there in the back corner, you can't see it anymore. But I'm heading inside to get some breakfast because they had this robot juice machine in there that I really wanted to use. So this is it right here, it's a little robot that'll make you a smoothie. And I think I'm gonna do the green dream. There we go, it's making it. served so typically on days like today when it's 100 plus degrees out and in the back of the van it's over 100 degrees out i typically try to stay out of the van as much as i possibly can so best way to do that is by driving so i'm going to take this get all this taken apart and stowed away and then we are hitting the road So with this thing, the only thing you gotta worry about is uh, in the back here, it has this little tube that for me, it's a little bit convenient because I can just drain it out into the sink. But this is like capturing all the condensation that's built up in this unit from making cool air. And since it's not all sloping downhill, there's just a bunch of water stuck in this tube. But you can run this to a bucket. It really doesn't produce that much water. I just like to run it to the sink because I have it. And the only reason I have to drain it is because the hose isn't at a down angle when it's at the sink. So a bunch of it just builds up in there, but it's not too bad. And it's super light, pops right off the counter. And essentially, that's all I gotta do. So the thing that sucks, you can see all the water that came out of the AC down there, about being in the valley like this in Central California, I think we're just north of San Francisco right now, is that there's no real wilderness camping. I mean, if you really look for it, you can probably find something. It probably wouldn't be the most ideal spot that you'd wanna stay. So for the last couple days, I've been staying in truck stops, rest stops, and parking lots pretty much wherever I can because that's the only real option. Last night we stayed in this wonderful Love's parking lot which if you watch my channel a lot I stay here quite often and then tonight we're going from this Love's travel stop. I think I'm going to drive four or five hours south because I'm trying to get as much of that blazing hot middle of the day while I'm driving when I can have the AC on and we're going to camp at a Walmart. Van life in populated areas uh, definitely isn't as scenic as <laughs> being up in Alaska. There we go. I guess the uh, air temperature outside is 102. It just gets a lot Hotter back here in the back of the van because it's painted all black, but let's hit the road.
and after five and a half hours of driving, we have finally made it to our home for the night in, can't really see it right now, a Walmart parking lot. So I think I will go ahead and try to find a spot that has some shade. That one right there looks like it's good enough. And there we go. This is our home for the night. So I always park kind of far away from the Walmart whenever I camp in the area just because I don't want to be taking up spots, but this parking lot is absolutely massive. I don't know if you guys really can see it all, but there is like a billion spots. But I am not going to be spending a ton of time in the backpack here before I go to bed because man, it is hot. It is currently 96. Don't know if you guys can see that, 96 degrees Fahrenheit in the back of the van. So not very enjoyable to be back here. And um, typically, if you guys watch my channel, you know that I do a lot of cooking right here. I've got my three burner stove and my oven and all that kind of stuff, but there's no way that I'm gonna slave over a stove tonight when the van is 96 degrees. So I think I'm gonna head in there and see if I can find something to make for dinner that we don't have to cook. And then also I'm gonna get a bunch of ingredients to make some homemade ice cream. So let's get out of the back of this giant metal oven and head in and get some ingredients. So I think for the uh, dinner tonight, I'm just gonna do a Tex-Mex salad and then all the stuff for the ice cream. I think that should be everything we need for salad and homemade ice cream. So the only thing that I have left to get that I didn't want to get now was some ice for the ice cream that I'm going to make later, but I don't want to get that now. I'll just go into McDonald's and grab a large cup of ice whenever we're ready to make it. Oh, it's hot. One thing that I will say about the heat out here versus the heat back home, when it's 97 degrees back home in Maryland, the humidity makes you sweat buckets. But out here, it's not a very humid heat, so it honestly doesn't feel as hot, and you don't sweat as much, so it's really not as bad as a hot day back home, but it is still pretty unbearably hot. We got the fan on for now. I'll probably hook up the uh, AC a little bit later and hopefully cool off a little bit, but I am actually starting to sweat already. And we have actually gained two degrees since I went in the store. It's now 97 degrees back here. Tomorrow we will be escaping the heat. So there's a couple ways that you can escape the hot weather like this when you live in a van is one, you can stay out of California, stay north. And two, if you're going to be in California or Arizona or anywhere that's going to be hot, you can either drive up to higher elevations or you can head down to the coastline because the coastline is always cooler, which is also typically what I like to do and what we're gonna be doing tomorrow. And then after that, I'm headed to my brother's house in San Diego and figuring out what my uh, next road trip is gonna be. And also I'm probably gonna change this shirt. I did spill some RB sauce on, on the way here. So the reason that I'm not cooking anything is because when I cook in the van, it raises the temperature by about 10 degrees no matter where I'm at. So. I'm not trying to make it any hotter in here than it already is, so we're doing a no-cook dinner. Should be enough leaves. So for the salad, I'm kind of going for Tex-Mex style, I guess. We're doing tomatoes, romaine lettuce, cheddar cheese, some taco fiesta. I saw these in the store, they look good. Taco fiesta, black beans, cilantro, lime, and then some crushed up tortillas, and some pre-cooked grilled chicken strips. But first, we gotta prep all the ingredients. That should be enough tomatoes. Now we should be good to build our salad. Lettuce in the bowl, a little bit less. Tomatoes in the bowl. Cheese in the bowl. Beans in the bowl. And then some grilled chicken. Break that up a little bit. And then the last topping is just some crushed up tortilla chips. And there we go. 
that is our beautiful salad. Now all we need is a dressing, and I think for that, we're gonna do ranch dressing and some taco seasoning for like a nice flavorful ranch. I'm just gonna pour this directly on there. Taco seasoning. Mix that all together. And then after it's mixed, that's what it looks like, and it actually looks pretty good. But I cleaned up the counter a little bit because I am burning up. It is so hot. <clears throat> so before I eat, I'm gonna set up the AC to blow directly at me. Keep me nice and cool. Which is why I'm really glad it came with these like expandable tubing things. So I can screw this in there and then aim it at myself wherever I might be in the van. For the air that we need to exhaust out, I have this little Velcro attachment. It goes up here. And I take the exhaust and just kind of wedge it up there like that. And then all that's left to do to get it turned on, let's plug it in. So the power draw on this thing isn't really too, too bad. It does come with a 12 volt, like massive battery pack that you can attach onto the bottom of this, but I never use it because the battery bank that I have in the van is mostly good enough. But if you don't have something like that, the battery pack that you attach to this can last for eight hours on sleep mode, which is like the least powerful mode for this thing to be on. Realistically, you could charge it while you drive, use it all night, rinse and repeat and be pretty much good. Go ahead and get this bad boy turned on so I can stop sweating. Right now we're gonna use it in powerful boost mode for maximum coolness. And uh, just so you guys can tell, I don't know if you can see that down there, but it says 97, oh, well, it did say 97. Now it says 83 degrees Fahrenheit, but we'll check in after there and see what kind of air we're getting blown out of that thing. And it might be a little loud because I got the fan on up there. Oh, it feels so good. I got this thing blasting me with cold air. Man, does it feel good. And this salad is actually pretty good. And I will definitely say that this thing has saved my life more than once being back here. Last summer, I got caught in a heat wave up in Montana where it was like 112 degrees and I had this thing blasting all night. It literally, I think, saved my life. It makes it so much more bearable to travel around in the summer months, especially with trying to sleep. Typically, I'll save as much of my battery bank as I can. And then when I'm going to bed, I tuck it under my sheets and just sleep with it on all night long and it feels so good. And also I do want to point out that this video is in no way sponsored by this company, Zero Breeze. I just truly enjoy the fact that I'm not completely miserable in the back of the van. All right, dinner complete. And for those of you guys who don't know, these overhead lights that I have, these uh, floating LED lights, which also is what causes those little black bars, but it's just a ton of LED strips wrapped individually around each of these planks. They're kind of just fished through the ceiling over to one another and then all fished up to the front daisy chained together and then hooked up to this switch over here but they use a ton of power so typically when i'm not filming or doing something like this i'll have these off so that i can save power so i might leave them off for the rest of the night and just have all my secondary lights on like my kitchen light my floor light and then this is the light I typically use for most of my stuff. And also, the uh, AC is blowing out 63 degree air. So it is very comfortable back here when I'm standing in front of it, but it is still 93 degrees, so. But for this ice cream, apparently, and I think I remember doing this one time as a kid, but I'm not 100% sure. Apparently, all you need is some salt and some ice, and you put the heavy cream vanilla and sugar in a small Ziploc bag, and then you take another big Ziploc bag filled out with ice, and then cover the ice in salt, put it around the small Ziploc bag and shake it up for like 45 seconds and the heavy cream turns into ice cream. So that's what we're gonna try to do tonight. So we've got our salt, we've got our vanilla, we've got our sugar, we've got our heavy cream. And I even got some sprinkles to decorate it. But before we can do that, I've gotta go into McDonald's, and get a large cup of ice. And while I'm out there, I'm gonna take out the trash too. But I gotta get out the front door because my side door is blocked by the AC. And don't worry, we're safe in the parking lot tonight because we got a lot cop here which is essentially just a uh, large camera thing. All right, so I also needed to get some Ziploc bags, but there's like a 10 mile long line. So we're gonna go put these back. And I think I'm just gonna use the grocery bags that I have from earlier. Hopefully that's enough. All right, we're back in the van and now we gotta act quickly before all of our ice melts. Basically, according to this recipe, one cup of half and half, Add that to the small Ziploc, spill it a lot. You add some sugar, which I'm not gonna measure, but you need two tablespoons. And then half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, which looks like just about that much. There we go. This is supposedly going to turn into ice cream. I'm gonna take my ice, throw it in this Walmart bag. Hopefully it's waterproof. And then to that, add a ton of kosher salt. And I think this makes the ice colder. I don't know what it does, honestly, but I guess we'll see. And then you throw this in there. 
make sure there's no air in the bag. And then, uh, I thought you only shake it for like 25, 30 seconds, but apparently you gotta shake it for like seven minutes, so that's what I'm gonna do. See you guys in seven minutes. All right, it has been just about six minutes. I can feel it, it's like kinda solid in there, so. We're gonna stop, I think most of the ice is melted anyways. Grab myself a bowl. So all of our ice has completely melted, but <laughs> look at that. It's like a soft serve consistency almost. That's pretty cool. It's like really solid. I did not expect it to get this solid. I think I might've added too much sugar though. That might be why. But I mean, it's actually a pretty good ice cream consistency. And also I apologize if the uh, fans are super loud and obnoxious. It's just way too hot in here to have them off. There we go. Ice cream completed. So it's definitely a little bit more like chalky than normal ice cream, but add some sprinkles. Cheers. Homemade van life funfetti vanilla ice cream. It's kind of plain, honestly. I feel like it could have used a little bit more sugar. It tastes kind of like just frozen milk that's a little bit sweet. Also, I'm really curious what the uh, science behind the salt on the ice is. I'll have to Google that later. Temperature's going down in the back of the van though. 91 now. Ice cream definitely feels good. I can get those lights off, save some power. I think my biggest mistake with those lights, these ones up top, I made them hospital white, so they're very harsh on the eyes and very obnoxious. They do look really cool, but for full-time living, it's just a little bit impractical because it's so bright and it feels like I'm in a, a hospital room 24 seven. So I wish I had done them in a warm LED like I did in my bedroom. Maybe a little bit less warm than this one, but I wish I had done them in a more warmer color than than the, uh, the harsh, bright white that they are, but I rarely, really ever use them in a practical way. This light that goes down the length of my van is typically enough for whatever I want to do, but. Dinner is cooked, ice cream is finished, AC is on, cranking. We're at 61 degrees right now, so it's actually getting cooler. And I think tonight, since it was hot and I've been sweating, I'm gonna take a uh, quick dude shower, which if you watch my channel before, you already know what they are. Essentially, gigantic baby wipes that you take wipe down your whole body, and it's kind of like a halfway shower, so it makes you feel a little bit better. So I'm gonna do that real quick, and I will check in with you guys once I'm done. There we go, all clean. So I just recently got these as well, which are the dude wipes, I guess, facial wipes. So I've been using these on my face instead of the other ones, because they feel a little bit better. That's a Walmart parking lot van life shower for you. It is getting kind of late, it is 9.30. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on sleep mode, which is basically just a less powerful version, so I can leave it on pretty much all night turn off the lights and then I'll come over here and let you guys know exactly how much power it's drawing once it kind of ramps down a little bit. Give you some perspective for how much power that actually translates to and uh, in like a time that I could theoretically leave this on for. So I had to turn off all the lights off to get a true reading, but we're right now we're pulling just about 16, 17 amps. I think before I've seen it drop down to 14. So right now I think my fridge's compressor might be on which draws an additional five. So theoretically I have 300 amp hours. If this is drawing 15 amps, I could run it for 20 hours straight on a 100% full battery charge, which I don't have right now. I only have 250 out of my 300 amp hours. So I could run this for about 15 hours nonstop with no issues whatsoever in sleep mode. And sleep mode, it doesn't matter because I'm not trying to point this at myself to cool myself off. Essentially, I'll, I do what I did this morning. Take the tube, pull it over to myself, and then tuck it under my blanket and it keeps me cool all night. And sometimes that thing falls out. All right, so I just went back over there and hooked it back up. But take this, tuck it under my sheets. I've got a nice little cocoon of AC. And man, does that feel good to fall asleep in, so. Most of the time at night, I'll sit under here with a nozzle in my sheets and just kind of sit on my laptop or do whatever. Keep cool for the night until it gets really late. But I think that is going to be it for this video. Probably just gonna go to bed here in about 30 minutes. So as always, I truly appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, think about clicking that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. And I will catch you guys next time.